and then push R to get my scale and scale that down. Now I have a bouncy ball. So I've used planar projection to get the star on the top and the bottom. I'm ignoring the middle belt there, but I want a light blue stripe on the middle belt. Now if I close that and go back into my side view, I'm going to select the other faces that I haven't mapped yet, that belt across the middle, right? Go back to my perspective view, and let's use cylindrical mapping, this one here, because even though it's part of a sphere, those planes are essentially creating a cylinder around the belt of that sphere, okay? Think geometrically. So cylindrical mapping, and we'll open up the texture editor, and it looks like it's done it right, but not exactly right. I have my shell, which is all the UVs that correspond to these faces, and it's already selected. And I'm still on my scale tool, so I'm going to just go ahead and scale that sideways, and that's stretching the star out. That's not what I wanted. In fact, I don't even want a star on that part of the ball. What I want is to scale it and move it into this zone of the blue, the light blue. So let me move it over there, and in fact, let me zoom in so I can see a little better. This is the same tools, and I hold down Alt, and I can zoom, I can pan, just the same way I do in the 3D view. But if I move it right into this light blue area, then I can actually cover two of these instances of the texture and there's no other pixels but the light blue there so I'm not going to get any seams or anything. Seams are something you'll have to worry about when you have a more complicated texture and as long as those UVs stay inside that blue belt then what I get over here in the 3D view is a nice clean separation. I get my blue in the middle of that ball because those faces have been mapped into the light blue area of the ball. And you see at the border of those faces, this is where they join up, but I've just got the change of color there. It's like a seam, but it's an intentional seam. It's where I want the color to change. So that is my bouncy ball. Maybe it's a little too big, and I can rotate it like it's rolling around. And maybe the star's a little too big. Let me revisit that. Let's select the shell. If I could just scale these up, then my star would get smaller. But then I have a problem because the light blue is now invading that because I'm covering that light blue area. So what I might do then if I'm a perfectionist. Go back to my side view and oh wait I'm on UVs. So let me go to the faces and I just want to select this row and that row and I'm going to give them new cylindrical mapping up here. So now I've taken them, they were mapped here on this planar projection but now they're separate and I've got them where I can uh, tweak them. It's just trying to get some of that darker blue into that area so I can have the stripe or the star be a little smaller. So I'm just going to position these UVs over the dark blue texture and I can even overlap those two together. It doesn't really matter because they have the same thing on them. All right, that was a little advanced, but now look what I've got. I have a little more of that blue space there, and I have a smaller star. So that's that ball. And now for the soccer ball. This is going to be a little bit tricky. Instead of using the icon here in the shelf, I want to go up to create a NURBS primitive. NURBS doesn't have a soccer ball, apparently. I was looking under NURBS primitives, but I was looking in the wrong place. I need to go to create polygon primitives, and it has... <coughs> A primitive that's a soccer ball which is awesome because how else are you gonna make that shape with all the pentagons and all that and some of these are really fun you can just do crazy stuff with them polygons are a lot of fun a lot of people think that they're like a lower form of modeling but I think they're quite liberating there's a lot you can do with them let's create that soccer ball this one's a little more complicated in terms of texturing but let's create a new material assign a new material Lambert color file browse for the file and it is called soccer ball 01 what? That doesn't look right. I know there's texture on there, but it's not right. So let's look at how it's mapped. Open the UV texture editor. And I got a whole bunch of these hexagons. So let me select this shell. These are all connected, except that one. This is the default mapping for the soccer ball. That's not very helpful. What do we do? Ah, what did I just do? So I took all these. I, I had the whole shell selected. And I clicked the scissors button up here. Separate the UVs along the selected edges. So all edges that are selected, and edges are included when I have this shell selected, it's going to break them all into separate pieces. You don't see anything happen, but now when I deselect and go back to select one of those shells, I have just the hexagon, just this hexagon, and just this hexagon. So it's a little bit tedious. I'm going to have to pull out all the hexagons, and I'm going to basically map all the same textures on the same, the same shapes here. That one doesn't want to detach. That's a little pesky one. So we'll just move them together. There's probably a less tedious way to do this, unitize. Well, the trouble is it'll make them not hexagonal anymore. It'll make them square, I think. We can try and see, but... Let's do it with one. Yeah, see, it turns it into a square. That's not what I want. You know, doing it by hand is not the most precise way, but anyway, I could stack these all on top of each other, but let's let's try something else here. Let's move this hexagon over here. We're gonna rotate it about, what, 15, 30 degrees, something like that. And then we're gonna scale it up to fit the shape that's intended for it on my texture map. Try to get it pretty precise. Now, I wanna see over here in the 
3D perspective view, which face it is I've got selected. I can click F and it'll zoom in to frame that face. So that's the face that I've now mapped onto the texture. There's a copy paste function. Copy colors, UVs, and or shaders from a face to the clipboard. Now I may be able to select the other hexagons and paste those UV, the UV layouts into the same place. So let me get more hexagons here, paste those. So I can go back and forth from the 3D view to get all the hexagons and paste them on there. That's probably the easiest way of doing this. And that pesky one did not want to detach for some reason. That Those two are connected together. They can't be separated, apparently. So I'll do the same thing with a pentagon here. Move it into place, scale it up. UV mapping can be a little bit tedious, but there's some tools that will make it easier. Now I'm going to copy that and then select my other pentagon faces. And hopefully those two won't be connected anymore. Paste them on. Yeah, those two. Let's see what happens if I delete that face. And then fill the hole. Mesh, fill hole. So there's a new polygon on there, select that face and copy that, paste it on there. Now I still have one pentagon that is not properly mapped. So I need to go copy the pentagon UVs and paste it on there. I think my soccer ball is now textured. Okay, that wasn't too painful, was it? I mean, look at the reward. We have a soccer ball. How awesome is that? But it's a kind of clunky soccer ball. It's not beautiful and round like this one. So this might be a case where we want to you might want to smooth. I, I'm always hesitant to use the smooth function, but look, it gives us a better ball. There's more polygons there, so I don't know. Is it worth it? I think so. We'll just leave that. That looks pretty good. Just click smooth one time. If I click it again, I'm just going to get unnecessary numbers of polygons. That works pretty good. So now I have a soccer ball. You can make a different colored version if you want. It's up to you. But those are the three balls. I think we'll stop it there.